Hi, I'm Mike Deming, your host of Sportsman's News Television. You know what, for those of you that have been longtime watchers know that we spend a great majority of these times when we're filming shows out evaluating outfitters, checking it out, making sure that what they promise is what they deliver, and you guys get the opportunity to benefit from that. But one of the things that I truly am passionate about is hunting trophy mule deer without an outfitter, doing it myself. You know what, my great uncle, my grandfather, that was their passion and I absolutely love hunting big trophy mule deer and Colorado's where I grew up and it's kind of near and dear to my heart and a trip I look forward to hitting every year and when you can make a trip like this with great friends it makes it even better stick around this is going to be an exciting show Wait, 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 wait. He's the biggest meal deer I've ever shot, so I'm stoked about it, man. Mike put his right on it. Mike Deming. Awesome. Thank you. I 
got that wrong. Head there. Head there 70. This is what we came to Colorado for. Big mule deer. Look at that. Look at that face. Kicker buck. The kicker buck. He's a buck. Hey, congratulations, Steve Mayer, for an absolutely world-class Colorado mule deer. His biggest buck ever, and I've been hunting with Steve for nearly 20 years, so I've seen just about every mule deer Steve Mayer's been able to put on the ground. Once again, congratulations, Steve. Great buck. It was fun sharing that experience with you. And being able to have Steve McGrath from Camp Chef along with us was, was a really great experience for me as well. I've known Steve for eight or nine years working with Camp Chef, and I've been on some waterfowl hunts and some fishing trips with him. But when he told me that he was interested in getting an opportunity to kill a big trophy mule deer, I told him I've got just the hunt and just the opportunity. So we were able to round up a landowner voucher for my good friend Wes Atkinson of Atkinson Expeditions. And uh, it's a pretty exciting trip to see Steve McGrath get the hammer down on a really good Colorado buck. missing <laughs> and I got one shot. <laughs> Look at the gnarling on that. Look at the mass on it. Yeah. Holy cow. <laughs> That's pretty cool, bro. The deer didn't go 20 yards. He's got 13 or possibly 14 inch fours. And that's that side. This side's definitely 14. Look at the eye guards. This guy's got knurling all around the bases. That's a good sign of an old deer. Congratulations, bro. Thank good you. shot. Experience with deer hunting, man. What do you think? Pretty incredible. I mean, it, just the experience of of hiking, glassing, just enjoying the outdoors. And I think I'll be back. Yeah. So we're back here in a unit that we hunt every year, and I preach this and preach this and preach this that you're better off to hunt a unit that you can either afford to buy a landowner tag every year or you can buy, or you can draw it every couple of years. What it does, it gives you the ability to start to learn the terrain, learn where the deer go, where what happens when they get pressured, what happens when they get weather, where do they go when they rut. And those of you that wait 18 or 20 years with a limited entry tag, you know what, sometimes it pays off, 
but more than likely you're going to go home with tag soup or a stand, substandard buck. And we still see bucks like this almost every day. And uh, fortunately, Steve was able to put the hammer down on him. So <laughs> good job. We'll get this guy taken care of and get him back to camp. Mike. You know, when we did this hunt last year, uh, we Sportsman's News had given away a trip. And Gary Stambaugh from Yukon, Oklahoma was the lucky winner. And we got out there and a couple of days into the hunt, we got Gary on an absolute giant 190s plus mule deer. Big typical with some trash. We actually named him Trash Man and got him within 195 yards of this buck and uh, prone position. I think buck fever just took over. He missed him when he stood up out of his bed, super exciting, but that buck ran off. And uh, unfortunately, Gary wasn't able to get a buck on that hunt. And uh, there was still a few days left in the hunt. And Wes told me he had a landowner voucher still available. So we got that landowner voucher and we turned last year's hunt into a hunt for me. And me and cameraman Mike Duff got after it hard. We were gonna try and find Trash Man and didn't work out for us that we were able to get him. But we were able to find a big 196 typical with some kickers, with lots of mass, everything you want in a big Colorado trophy mule there. So we'd kind of set the bar pretty high last year. And now that I was gonna hunt, we still had five, six days left on this hunt. I was, uh, I was looking for something pretty special. But fortunately, when you got a team of guys that really know how to look for deer and we were in a good area, good unit, it didn't take long that first morning I'm hunting and we saw an absolute giant with kickers and everything a guy looks for. Just watch, this is pretty exciting. He's down. He's down. He's down. Nice shooting, Mike. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> well, it's our fourth morning here in Colorado. We've already killed two really good bucks, big mature deer. That's what we target when we're here in Colorado, just big mature deer. And Mike had seen some good bucks yesterday, way out to the west. We got up this morning, we were taking off just first light and in gray light. I saw some bucks up here and Lo and behold, Mike said, that is a stud. So we got the spotter out, got it on him. Lo and behold, he was, and we had to hustle up this hill because they were going over the top. And there's nothing back over here. And lo and behold, we got up here, had a 462 yard shot, was able to lay down, put the smack down on that buck, one shot, hit him low in the chest, and he didn't go 10 yards. So fortunately, when you can shoot a decent range, you know you gotta go recover him. So <laughs> let's go take a look at that buck. You know, I just love shooting big trophy mule deer. It's what my great uncle who brought me up, it's what his passion was, and it kind of passed along to me. And it's just as good as it gets. I mean, this will be a unit that I come hunt every year of my life. I'm going to recover my buck. It's a long way up this king. But the good thing is, when you're getting closer, it keeps getting bigger. That's a good sign. That other big four point standing on the skyline right now. Yeah. 
Kicker, kicker, kicker. Kicker. Nice. Yeah, brother. Oh. Well, we had another great hunt here in Colorado. This is my fifth year over here in this unit. Second year getting to hunt, come with my great friend, Mike Duff here, cameraman, he does a great job here. Came with Steve Mayer, and Steve McGrath, and everybody killed really big, mature bucks. This is what we expect when we're here. Super exciting. This buck is, uh, we rough taped him out. He's a little over 195. Just an awesome buck. There over one nine in two years in Colorado. That's what you would think here. Woohoo! <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> Life is good here in Colorado. I would come every year. Pretty unbelievable to kill two bucks in the one nineties in back-to-back -back years. You know, it just goes to show you what a good unit will do. That buck scores 198 and four eights. Just an absolute phenomenal Colorado buck. You know, we were done and ready to pack up and go home. And uh, we went back into town, run into a buddy of mine that had, uh, who had also acquired a landowner voucher from Atkinson Expeditions. And he was struggling a little bit on the hunt. And since we had all the free time and, and people to get it done, and we know the unit, uh, I told my good friend Ed Bianchi from California, I said, you can go with us, man. We're going to find you a big buck to get shot. And uh, boy, it didn't take long for us to, uh, to find a buck for Ed. I can't believe it. You got him, buddy. Is he down? He's down. He's down. Oh, you kept me calm. I, I, I had him in there, and I had him good, and then I moved, and I couldn't find him, and he was a lot lower. I kept looking way up the hill. Thanks for keeping you me bet, so brother. calm, man. He's down, though, He's right? He's down. He's down. Great Mike, job. I'm so appreciative. <laughs> you bet. I feel like I'm 16 years old. About 50 pounds lighter. <laughs> until tomorrow. <laughs> oh, until tomorrow. I'm going to be feeling it. I can't wait to see this buck. He's right there. Oh, man, I can't wait. Oh, I can see him. I can see the tips of his horn. He told me to look with my naked eyes. I had to put my glasses back on. Because I don't shoot with him. Oh my god. Oh, I see that in line. Oh man, I'm just seeing the front. Oh, what a heavy buck. Oh man. Oh, I can't believe it. Oh, look at this. Oh, it's just, oh, I can't. He put himself in a rock. Oh my god. Look wow. at that. Oh. Oh, that's good. That's like a dream of a of a lifetime. Oh. Oh. Hey, I can't thank you so much for spotting. Nice shoot. Hey, I can't. Thank you so much, man. Oh, good job, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cut that one. Thanks so much. God. There he is. Dedication, man. Woo. Always pays off. Hey, congrats to Ed on a great buck. You know, that buck scored 186 and was absolutely everything you could expect in a buck. His biggest buck ever. 
You know, we were able to harvest four bucks out of this unit. We had a 182 average, which, uh, you know, need to say, I'll be back there again next year. Hey, thanks for joining us on this episode, and we'll be back to bring you another great show.